Documents from a case that happened 50 years ago. Let's play along with the old man for a little longer, shall we? Zack, that means we need to head for the sheriff's department. Welcome back, everyone, to Let's Play Deadly Premonition. Last time, we had a conversation with Harry Stewart, where he told us some unexpected information about a rumor about how the Red Seeds are supposed to cause immortality if you kill someone. Didn't sound like uh, York really believed it, but he did agree to go get Harry the files he wanted from the police station in exchange for more information. So that's where York figures we have to head now. However, there was something from last time that was kind of unresolved at the graveyard. If you recall, at the graveyard there was a marker for a side quest, but we couldn't seem to do anything with it. Well, that was last chapter. If we go back there for this chapter, we will find... Where shall we go next? Well, probably the graveyard, it sounds like. If we go there for this chapter, we will find that we're able to interact with that side quest marker. So we'll just take care of that real quick before we head to the police station. York mentioned that none of the, uh, none of the people he had arrested for the previous Red Seed murders had ever said anything about any kind of rumor about the Red Seas causing immortality or anything of that nature. Hold on a moment. So he did seem skeptical. He was also skeptical of the, of the fact that the FBI had no records of a mass murder that took place in uh, Greenville 50 years ago. I guess York would have checked up on that before he came to the town. But Harry Stewart said that he was there. That he saw it, that he saw the killer with his own eyes. He also maintains that the killer that we're chasing this time is not the same as the raincoat killer from 50 years ago, which would make sense. He also brought up the idea that perhaps red seeds are... Whoa. That red seeds are now growing in other parts of the world and that the rumor has spread far outside of Greenvale. Well, that would be unfortunate if that was the case, because if it was true, then even if York gets to the bottom of the seeds here in Greenvale, it would mean that that's not necessarily the end of the Red Seeds murders, if there are more growing around. Anyway, last time, we saw this open grave, but we couldn't really do anything with it. Looks like someone else can't sleep around here. But why leave such a comfy grave? A wild dog took bones from the grave. Are there many wild dogs around here? Someone dug up grave. So a grave robber started it. And then in comes the wild dog. Skull, breastbone, <laughs> hip bone, left hand, right hand. Left leg, right leg, seven bones, taken by dog. Agent, could you find them? I can't, but need them. Back. You're the keeper of the graveyard. I understand your disposition, but I have my own job to do. Hmm. Please, agent, look for bones. I can't leave here. Please. I beg you. Zack, he's a really persistent guy when he wants to be. Very well. I'll make a mental note to help him. Well, Brian says that he can't leave the graveyard to look himself. But he was able to leave uh, previously for the town meeting. Emily did say that no one's ever really seen Brian leave the graveyard, even to go home. But we have been collecting these bones throughout the investigation. 
And so this is a special day, because someone finally wants our sternum. Is this one of them? That is... a bone. Thank you. Six... more. Right, so we do have to give them to him one at a time. Can't just give him uh, all at once. Is it? We can just skip by that, though. He, he just says the same thing again, as you might imagine. That's number three. Number four. Is it? Number five. Is it? Those bo those uh, dogs certainly did uh, scatter them far away from here. That's number six. And the last one. Is this one of them? That is a bone. Thank you. That's all. Agent. Thank you. Thank you. Now I can sleep again. This key. A key? For what? My house. Downtown. Big house. The door. The key in my back garden. A treasure. Take it. Go and look. For yourself. <laughs> and we finally used the bones. The bones we've been collecting all this time. And a new side quest starts. We got a key for helping Brian with this. And he says there's something in his backyard that will be helpful. We haven't been to his house yet. There's really been no reason to go there. H Hello. Well, he's not the first person who's uh, talked about goddesses. The twins talked about them as well. But our f business here at the graveyard is finished. But let's head over to Brian's house and uh, see what he wants us to take. Now, Brian's house is all the way across town. We can just use the radio to quickly get there. Now, the closest location to Brian's house would be... Anna's house is pretty close to it. So we'll just take a quick look at what uh, Brian might have in his house. Oh, Quint's here. I guess he's making lunch for Sally again. You know, it's been a while since we've uh, spoken to Sally. Might as well just pay her a visit. See if she's recovered at all. Or if she's still uh, in a state of shock. Anna? Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. I guess, uh, I guess Sally still is not doing so well. Hmm. 
It's not the first time she's mentioned Anna's supposed boyfriend. Hmm. What? Oh, hey, I thought we were friends. No, Quint, that's still not how you... That's still not how you hold that. You, you've not learned anything, have you? Two hands. Two, no, no. No, that, that's not how... Okay, we're just gonna leave now. Quint does not learn anything. But this is not the first time that Sally's brought up the subject of Anna's boyfriend, though this has not been mentioned much. That supposedly she was seeing someone and was not telling, uh... Sally about it. Now, from uh, Anna's house, Brian's house is right over here. Sort of a secluded area away from everything else. Alongside Ripper Street. Brian has quite a large, uh, area of property right here. Huh. Another dog. Much larger than, uh, most anyone else in town, really. This looks quite a bit different from any other area that we've seen. Looks like it's a much older house than, uh, and the other residents of Greenvale have. Unfortunately, we can't actually go in. But the key he gave us was not to his house, it was for his backyard. Okay. So here we are in the back. And a ladder leading up to his roof. A lot of stone gargoyles around. And this one's blocking our way. I guess if we give it a little push, it won't do any harm. Oh. Well, I, I don't think Brian will mind. I mean, Emily said he never comes home, so who knows how long it'll be before he notices that. Hope those not worth anything. But I mean, we had to do that to get to the other side of his backyard. We're really in our way, and in the way of a federal investigation. So we can see some blue glowies underneath this thing right here. The Wesley Special, which is a flamethrower. Yeah, Wes uh, Brian apparently commissioned a flamethrower from Wesley at the Panda Bear. It's infinite ammo. It works a bit different from other weapons. Kind of a underwhelming looking flamethrower though. We'll see how this works a little later. Can break locks, though. Right, so that was the purpose of collecting the bones that we've been doing, to eventually get this, the flamethrower. But as I was saying, on the subject of uh, Anna's supposed boyfriend, so Sally suspected that she was seeing someone, but... Anna never, uh, introduced him, never brought him home. So Sally really didn't know anything about him. And as we do know, that Anna had some kind of relationship going on with, uh, the killer. That's what we suppose, anyway, due to the premonitions. Maybe this is indeed the same person. But as for right now, it's about time to head to the police station and see if we can get those files. Don't know how thrilled George will be when he when we tell him that uh we want to give some confidential files to Harry. Can there really be documents here that the FBI doesn't even have? What do you think, Zach?
York. I told you, that's nothing more than local folklore. Harry said that he was there. The raincoat killer is a phantom, made up to scare children long ago. I can't believe you fell for that from Harry, of all people. I agree with George. Harry likes to play with people, play with their minds, too. George, Emily, of course I don't believe him word for word. But you won't mind if I at least try to confirm that it's wrong, will you? <laughs> well then, can you look for the files by yourself? I'm still looking for Thomas. Very well. Emily, open the filing room for him. Too, Zach. This might mean we're getting warmer to what we need. Hmm. Well, we've entered the filing room of the police station, and we found that uh, we found ourselves in the other world again. Let's try out the flamethrower while we're here. While we're here, and see what this does. Okay, yeah, so that's basically what it does. It, uh... When you set a, a shadow on fire, it constantly is damaged by it. Until it dies. However, when it's dying because of fire, it mo starts moving very fast. And tries to get in one last hit on you before it dies, like that. As a result, the flamethrower is really not so useful. Unfortunately. There is one use for it, however. Uh, one particular purpose that it is good for. I don't think we'll get the opportunity to do that this time, but maybe later on. noise. We're still missing a vital piece of the puzzle. So there's a premonition for this area, and of course, like any other time, that means there are puzzle pieces we have to get. Got a save room here. Really don't need to use this right now. Right, so that means, as you can see, there are three items that we're going to have to find to complete the premonition. We've seen these sliding out file cabinets before. We are looking for files. Uh, we don't really need that anymore. Come on, you knew that was coming. Right, so the Magnum a bit more effective when we're talking about normal enemies and not, uh, not the ones from the spiritual maps.
Hmm. So what we could see there was it looked like that the raincoat killer had been here and took the 1956 file. We couldn't see what he did with it, but we did see that he was tearing open that box. What's that? Ah, we haven't needed those for a long time. Of course, it's, if it's the case that the killer was here... Oh, I thought I was out of range. Alright, maybe I should just uh, go back to Old Faithful here. Alright, so if the raincoat... The raincoat killer really was here, and he took the files. That, of course, brings up the question on uh, how he was able to get in here. Did Harry already know that the files were gone? It does seem quite a coincidental that the time he asks us to go get them, it turns out that someone already has taken them. Of course, you might imagine. Oh, hold on. Found a red seat on this desk. This looks like the, uh... Yeah, Thomas's desk. This looks like the setup of desks in the office room. Which would make this one over here Emily's desk. I found the red seat right here. So that just, uh cleared up what we pretty much already knew. Hold on. That it was indeed the raincoat killer, or rather, uh, someone in a red raincoat that came into the filing room. Locked door. As I was starting to say before, you might assume... Hold on. You might assume... 
Okay, we haven't been in here. You might assume that whoever it was that came in here did not do so in the full raincoat killer's uh, getup. Must have come in without the raincoat on and put it on later. It would have been pretty conspicuous if it was the other way around. Might as well take this while we're here. We haven't really needed health too much. I do. There are a lot of them that are coming. I'm not actually sure. If this is an infinite respawn spot, it might be, so let's just head on, head on out. We found two of the puzzle pieces, so the third one has to be around here somewhere. Well, I'm sure York will have some questions for George and Emily anyway, after he gets out of here. Of who might have had access to get into this filing room. and why someone would want the 1956 file. Well, it would seem to back up Harry's story if it was the case that uh, something happened during 1956 if someone did take the file. Of course, George's assumption seemed to be... Let me just keep coming. George's assumption seemed to be that... Uh, there wouldn't be anything of interest if York looked at that file. And York did say maybe he should get the chance to prove Harry wrong by getting the file. And as you might have noticed, we warped out uh, to a different area when we went through that door. Just wanted to see if there was anything on the other side of it. Let's head back on over. And yeah, they just keep coming, so I'm just going to take this. Zack, looks like we need to continue our search for the documents. George, I'll get right to the point. It looks like someone else has just removed the documents I'm looking for. Huh? Removed? The cabinet looks like it had been forced open. That's impossible. No one could break into there. No. Emily, there is one person that can access that room at any time. You don't mean Thomas? Speculate. The profiling is my job, remember? More importantly, Emily, could you get me a coffee? A fresh one, if possible. At a time like this, why now? Emily, please. This is very important. Some coffee. 
and bring some milk on the side. Zach, you know something, don't you? I'm getting us some coffee. So tell me what you know. Ah, Zach, this is amazing. Even the taste of her coffee is thrilling, to say the least. What? No, nothing. This isn't the cup that Thomas always uses for me, is it? I'm sorry about that too, then. I just used a cup that was nearby. You have a problem with that? A problem? Not at all, my dear. The coffee is perfect. Okay, taste the side. This cup certainly is perfect. George, Emily, we're going to Velvet Falls. There's something waiting for us there. I can feel it. York, are you joking? You're trusting your cup? No, Emily. Going to a waterfall just might be a good idea. A waterfall is known to be a source of power. Even if we find nothing there, I'm sure it will give us some power. Thanks for the vote of confidence, George. And don't forget to bring a fishing rod. All right. I'll go get it. Fishing? Are you too serious? George, do you have a net? Well, York was not able to find the files he needs. But the coffee seems to be telling him to go to Velvet Falls. He doesn't seem to be really sure about what he'll find there. But let's find out. Zack, I hope we can catch a big one. Right, for, we're fishing, because why not? And for some reason we can't use our legendary rod, so we'll just use a normal one. And normal bait is the only thing we can use, though we have an infinite amount of it. Well, the coffee told us to come here. Who are we to doubt the coffee? Got a hit, and you may notice that there is a new icon on the screen. That files icon, and we just missed it. Try that again. So yes, it appears that after the raincoat killer took the files from the police station, apparently he threw them in the river. I guess if he didn't want anyone to see them, that's a good enough plan, because who would actually be able to fish that out? Of course, he was not anticipating York's coffee. Not missed again. This I caught a fish, though. A fish. But this isn't the time to be fishing for fish, Zach. No, of course it's not. 
then again, never has been. We've never actually gone fishing for fish. Thought we've caught a couple sometimes. I don't really know how the files are supposed to, uh, to bite the hook, though. York must have some pretty amazing fishing technique if he's able to do that. He just would have to kind of brush up against the hook with it with the files, kind of. It's not like the files would be putting up much of a fight once we get it hooked. Maybe this time? No. So, as I've said before, when you do uh, fish for something and you get those icons, when you press the button, it'll usually stop either three or four icons after the point where you press the button. That seems to change. So I'm going for three icons. Did it. something to brag about now. In all the history of the FBI, I'm probably the only one who fished out documents thrown into a waterfall. Don't you think so, Zach? I just don't believe it. Files from a waterfall. What does that all mean? It's called The Legend of the New Raincoat Killer. George, have you ever seen this handwriting? <gasps> yes. It's Thomas's. George, I need to take these documents to Harry. He said he'd tell me everything once I take the docs to him. Those are classified. I can't allow a civilian to view them. Especially that deranged old goat who owns most of the town. I agree with George. Harry is... How can I put it? He might be dangerous. You don't need to worry. You said it yourselves, didn't you? There has never been a mass murder case in this town. That means these documents pertain to a case that never actually happened. Just look at it as though they never actually existed, either. Ridiculous. York, I'm sure you've got a plan or something in mind. Okay, you have my approval. George, are you sure? Emily, we need to continue looking for Thomas. Our search may just have become a hunt. Yes, get on it. I'll go see Harry and Okay. I wouldn't believe it if I hadn't seen it for myself. But Thomas? There's got to be a rational explanation for this. Zach, George has started to change. I think the deaths of Becky and Diane had a deep effect on him. I guess this town truly is without a king now. Well, it appears that the rumor that Harry had talked about 
was also written down in those files. And apparently it was written by Thomas. So it seems that George and Emily are coming to the conclusion that it was Thomas that threw the files in the river. And that perhaps it might turn out that Thomas is the killer that we're looking for. Well, George and Emily are going to go off to continue looking for Thomas while we take the files to Harry. And hopefully he'll tell us everything that he knows. See you next time.